Capital Improvement Plan Workshop for uh, June 22nd, 2022. Tonight's Capital uh, Improvement Plan Workshop is part of our annual budget cycle. It is a workshop, so there are no motions, there are no votes, there's no public comment, uh, that which is all on the agenda. Um, at least the, the fact that there's no public comment is on the agenda. I know there's members of the public in the room, and of course you're welcome to be here, and I believe there'll be some online. But when we do our budget workshops and other workshops, uh, we don't take public comment. Uh, there'll be another uh, budget workshop on September 7th, which will be for the operating budget for 2023. Uh, tonight's capital budget workshop is part of our annual budget cycle. It's typically for the capital budget at the end of June. Um, tonight, we'll uh, hear from our uh, management team about the status of existing capital projects, and we'll go through the list of proposed capital projects for 2023. Um, that will then be presented uh, at the end of the year uh, uh, as, a, as a proposed budget by our manager. Uh, based on the input from tonight as well as, as future input. Um, we will, of course, discuss the capital budget in detail at that time, and we can amend it and change it. Tonight is to provide feedback and to, and to ask questions. Um, you know, the capital plan is a one-year budget for 2023 and then a five-year plan for years 24 through 28. So at the end of the year, we'll make a commitment for capital spending for 2023 and have a plan for the following five years. We have a very uh, time-tested uh, budget cycle and capital budget process that works quite well. And we have a, essentially a six-year capital plan, which is far more than most municipalities uh, are able to put together. Um, we want to try and finish by 9 o'clock and no later than 9 o'clock. We want this to be able to conclude this in, in three hours or less, which we were able to do a year ago. Um, this, uh, we have an ambitious plan. Uh, the, the, the proposed uh, expenditures of township funds are comparable to what they were for 2022, and we'll hear from our management team about how they've been able to proceed and implement the capital uh, projects in 2022. Things often take longer. Uh, uh, materials are, are, slow, are slow in some cases, um, but we want our capital plan to be leading to projects that are completed uh, as at a high quality as we expect them and without problems afterwards and we've been we've been able to do that and when we make when we proceed on capital projects um, we are usually very pleased with the results but it takes a lot of management time to ensure that that happens um, I'm going to turn it over in a moment to our township manager I also want to mention that today was the employee picnic and, and service awards presentation that was out in the parking lot. It hasn't occurred for the last two years. The last one was in 2019. Our manager uh, announced service awards for length of service, announced new hires, announced those who have retired in this period. It was wonderful to have the, the township family uh, of existing uh, uh, staff as well as retirees uh, who are able to be there to, to enjoy uh, this, which will hopefully resume as, as an annual event. So with that, I'll turn it over to our township manager. Thank you, Commissioner Zeloff. Uh, indeed, we had a good day for the employee picnic today, and, uh, and we recognized uh, a, a group of 15 employees who uh, were receiving their 20-year awards. Uh, we also had four employees who were receiving their 30-year awards for service uh, with the township. Uh, we noted that uh, we've had 44 retirees since uh, our last picnic in uh, 2019, uh, and we have five soon to, to be. So in short order, we will have had 49 uh, retirees and, and, of course, a like number of new hires. And it was nice to be able to recognize all those folks that uh, that we haven't been able to get together with over the last uh, two years. But uh, back to the CIP. 
Commissioner Zellop, you explained that uh, the CIP 2023 is a budget and the other years in the CIP is a plan. Uh, staff's been working on the CIP now for, uh, for months, but this workshop represents just the start of the CIP process uh, with the Board of Commissioners. We do this workshop uh, to assist the Board to establish priorities for infrastructure maintenance or improvement projects. We do it as a separate meeting so it doesn't get mixed up with the uh, overall operating budget. As I noted in the uh, cover memo uh, to the, your agenda tonight uh, that uh, the township for accounting purposes shows uh, assets of over $250 million. And that's likely understated. Uh, so that $250 million is what we're spending money in the CIP to either maintain or improve. Uh, and of course, you know, how we do that goes to the quality of life in the uh, community. The CIP is normally financed with uh, debt plus contributions from grant programs and utility contributions to our paving program. This CIP is somewhat unusual this year because we also have proceeds of the uh, American Rescue Program, federal grant dollars that has come to us in the amount of uh, $25.5 million. The board's already allocated uh, 11.9 million of that uh, 25.5, and uh, so we still have remaining 13.7 million, roughly, that uh, is yet to be allocated. Um, the board has set up several procedures for how that will occur in the future, uh, including a, a community assessment process that's ongoing. Additionally, we have a Treasury Department formula that comes with that money. And uh, one of the things that has to be done to sort of free it up to be able to be used that money for a variety of, of purposes is you have to run a calculation as to what your lost revenue is. And that cannot be done for the current year until we have our audit complete. It should be soon. Uh, uh, Finance uh, uh, Director Eric Traub will probably speak to uh, when we expect to see it. But we can't run those numbers until we actually have that uh, audit in hand. So Triad is currently conducting a needs assessment. They're interviewing a variety of organizations and folks in the uh, community. And there is a public meeting here on, uh, on the 27th, Monday the 27th, uh, at which we'll, they'll be seeking additional public input. And ultimately, that will result in a, uh, in a report for the Board of Commissioners. So back to the CIP. Generally, a piece of our CIP is funded with debt. Our debt policy uh, indicates that considerations will be made with the objective of maintaining our AAA credit rating. That, of course, needs to be balanced with our needs for the infrastructure. The cash flow plan that you're looking at this evening essentially shows that uh, the township would need to borrow $8.2 million in 2023 to finance this current draft of the, 20, of the uh, 2023 uh, CIP. It would uh, go into a CIP that is at $26.85 million in terms of uh, overall spending for, uh, for the next year. If we went with something around that $8.2 million, we are essentially keeping our debt level because that's uh, we're paying off just a little more than that $8.8, $8.9 million a year in debt service payments. Of course, you can adjust that. The $8.2 million could ultimately be reduced or increased depending upon uh, how you choose to use the eight remaining ARP proceeds and, and how you choose to add or subtract uh, uh, projects from the CIP. As Commissioner Zeloff said, final decisions are not made tonight. Uh, here we're just as a staff looking for any kind of direction, any additional information that you may want. Uh, the, uh, the process will, will go on. Uh, Public Works Director will soon re review projects, but uh, you'll see as he does that a number of projects are ongoing now. A number of projects won't finish from the 2022 CIP until sometime into 2023. Uh, the size of our CIP this year and last, and next rather, is uh, it has really to some extent been affected not only by the ARP funding, but also by COVID. We pushed off a lot of projects in 2020 when we didn't know what the impacts would be. And those began to push into future years, which then pushed other projects that were slated into future years. So 
last two years we've had substantial capital improvement plans. The draft you're looking at tonight is, uh, has already been reviewed by management and staff and we've gone through a process of trying to determine what can actually be done, how much can be accomplished. Recognize that the 26.85 million that shows in this uh, spreadsheet you have tonight, it's probably on the outside edge of, uh, of what we can realistically get done in the course of a year with existing staff and with existing uh, you know, engineering and everything else. Um, so, for information purposes, uh, mainly because the board has great interest in, in pedestrian related improvements, the 2023 CIP includes funding of, uh, of approximately 1.1 million in funds that go to trail type improvements in the township, and plus approximately $700,000 that go to sidewalk related improvements in the township. So you're dedicating next year, if you go with something similar to this plan, uh, roughly 1.8 million in uh, pedestrian related enhancements in the community. So anyway, to conclude, I hope this process is useful to you. It's only the start uh, with your involvement. And like I said, we will go through a procedure where we will, we will do re additional research on projects you may suggest. We will continue to refine estimates and then ultimately we'll deliver a, a, CI, a proposed CIP to you when we do the, uh, the annual budget uh, around the 1st of November. With that, uh, we we'll turn it back to you, Commissioner Zeloff. Thank you, Ernie. Uh, thanks for that explanation. Uh, there'll be lots of opportunity for commissioners tonight to ask questions, um, which is one of the important uh, components of this workshop. Um, uh, I'll next call on our uh, Director of Public Works, Paul McElhenney, who will uh, talk about and, and, and uh, give an overview of the 2022 projects that have either been completed or are currently underway. We have nine pages of those projects. He's not going to go through every one. He's going to pick out a few of them, and, but, but you can ask questions on any of them. Uh, there are over a hundred ongoing projects just to give you a, a sense of the magnitude of the, the 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 number of discrete projects that are underway in the capital program in, in lower marion township um and for those watching it in the room you can see the evidence of it when you drive or walk i mean there are road projects there are sidewalk projects there are signal projects there are utility projects and so uh, uh, you know, and, and, and there's all that, that those all are going to get buttoned up, particularly the utility projects and the road repaving is going to be starting soon. And Paul will talk about that. Um, but there are, um, uh, there are a great number of categories of projects that are uh, currently underway in the township. So with that, I'll call on Paul McElhenney, director of public works. Good evening, everybody. As been, um, stated by both uh, Commissioner Zoloff and uh, Manager McNeely. Uh, last year, CIP and this year's CIP have been substantial. Um, our team has been a little bit busy um, with projects, uh, but I'd like to bring to you just a little bit of an update on this year and where we're at and what's going on. And to start off, you'll see the the first item is our completed projects. and. You'll see within that there are several bridges that were completed this year, including the one near and dear to Commissioner Zoloff. Uh, we completed the Penswood Bridge, we did the Maniunk Road Bridge, um, and we did some smaller bridges that were damaged during the tropical storm several years ago. Along with that, there was a lot of repairs that needed to be done. We had almost a million dollars worth of repairs that were caused by tropical, the tropical storm two summers ago. Um, that weren't part of the emergency votes that you had taken. These were smaller projects they've completed. So uh, we've done a lot in the last year with bridges and storm water, or with storm related damage and those type of things. Um, we've also been working diligently on the Marion Kimwood streetscape. That's the intersection at Old Lancaster and Montgomery Avenue. That has been going on for several years um, that dates back to back with Commissioner McGuire when that was his ward. Um, now uh, Commissioner Kramer has inherited that. We finally worked out the design um, with the 
property owners down there and we're moving forward and it's out to bid so hopefully we'll be completing that uh, this year um, as you can see facility improvements we have all types of things going on at all the buildings here from window repairs to we're getting uh, we're underway, the bidding's underway for the Bryn Mawr Community Center for the upgrades that will be occurring there um, for the, um, the Ada Munch group. So um, that's well underway. That should be starting this year. Uh, I don't know if we'll be complete, but we're working on that. There's the small things that we're doing throughout many of the buildings that, uh, go, that don't go unnoticed, but people don't realize that we're doing things changing carpet, painting, making repairs to windows, vestibules, those type of things. Um, one of the big projects that's about to kick off, we have our pre-con meeting next week, is the road paving, which I'm sure each and every member of the board, each and every member of the public is quite aware of the road conditions. Commissioner Zoloff pointed out earlier a lot of utility projects. I'm not responsible. I'm not doing the utility projects. I just have to try to f get them done through the uh, by nudging the utilities I'll say um, but we are getting ready to uh, schedule that one of the big questions that everybody has asked no matter what ward is Conchahawk and State Road Conchahawk and State Road between Henry Lane and Mill Creek that section if you're familiar with it which I think everybody is is we've had two utilities at work there we had Aqua and Pico both bringing in large infrastructure improvements through there. We made them work together. That project, the goal, and we meet weekly about it, is to have them done so that we can be paved before Labor Day. So when school opens, the road is repaved, the detour is gone, and it's all forgotten. So that is getting ready. We have a pre-con early next week with the contractor. One of the new things or big highlights is that, as you know, last year you named a new director or a new director was named for parking and um, the, the, Mr. Adams and Mr. Adams has uh, taken the municipal parking lots and has examined them and, is a, and has put together a plan and is making upgrades and forecasting for the future. So um, we look forward to working with them. Uh, with paving and, and new sidewalks and curbs and so forth. So that's a big change that's a positive change that's going on. We'll see improvements that are occurring in the parking lots. One of the really big projects is 4217 that's underway and that's road stabilization phase one along Mill Creek Road. You'll see in the CIP it's a rather large number. It's over five over five hundred thousand dollars. But we've been we've been designing that road we've been watching that road we're having a lot of issues and it's been accelerated with the storms that we've been getting with washing away of stable sta the stabilization of the road so that's a big project that will be getting uh, kicked off later this year it'll be bid in the fall and uh, sp spring of next year we'll get into the construction and the stabilization and that's the section of Mill Creek Road between Conchahawk and State Road and River Road. There's a lot of a lot of needed repair in that area. Um, one of the big big projects that are underway, that are being that's actually being done by the state. We had to do the design was the intersection improvement at Spring Mill Road and Conchahawken State Road. Anybody that's come up the road from Conchahawken knows that the left lane becomes a left turn lane but people come up in the right and try to go straight so that'll all be done away with there'll be a dedicated left straight right turn lane there um what the goal of PennDOT is is to try to have the majority of the work done by late fall of this year they will have some punch list and certifications and stuff that'll go into next year but that intersection should be flowing later this year with three lanes going uphill or eastbound so that's a great thing that's going on big improvement for traffic and for safety um, another another item here you'll see is 4236 4236 if you look at your cheat sheet within the packet there are 40 plus projects in that that is all your intersections that's your sidewalks that's your crosswalks that is you, you name it it's in there in the way of pedestrian crossings and roadway improvements um, 
large number, of the, the, as the manager had indicated, there's sidewalks in there. There's about $750,000 worth of sidewalks contained in that. Uh, there's signal upgrades. That's where Commissioner Kramer and McKean will find the uh, levering mill sidewalk and an improvement at Belmont Avenue. That's where those items are found. But uh, since I touched on that, we're, we're finishing up the design for that and hopefully we'll be out to bid for phase two and three. We originally had it as phase two and then three, but they were combined. Commissioner Zoll told me not to be too long-winded, so I'm doing my best here. But we have a lot to talk about. Next big thing that uh, would be a good, of interest to the board is 4246, found on page 10. That's the Sustainability Infrastructure Program. As you know, last year the board okayed us to move forward with a test program for some EV vehicles. We have ordered two vehicles that will be tested out throughout uh, the township staff. Uh, the structure has been, been discussed on how that vehicle will be tested and how it will be rotated. We don't have all the details worked out on that. We have a vehicle coming for the police department, um, which I'm not going to divulge what it is. Just it's an EV vehicle and it may be used for more uh, undercover. So that's, that's coming. We don't have delivery dates on any of the three vehicles yet. We're waiting. But with that, the, when we did the pump upgrade, the fuel station upgrade over here at the east, at the uh, police uh, parking lot, uh, we designed in additional conduit for future growth, which allowed us that we're going to put our first charging station right next door here. That'll be for charging the police vehicle and, and our first trial there. We also have a design underway for down at Kegel little more complicated because there's expansion growth down there and what does it mean so we had uh, several meetings as to final design but uh, we're waiting for the bid documents to go out on that so in short order we should be seeing at least the charger and hopefully soon vehicles but as I noted we don't have delivery dates yet from any of the manufacturers Then we have numerous parks improvement uh, throughout. Uh, Ms. Heller's crews are busy, to say the least, uh, with just maintenance of the parks, but they're also upgrading the basketball courts. They're putting in their pickleball courts. They're replacing fences. They're doing improvements to the bike paths and pedestrian paths, so they're, they're, they're active, to say the least. Big item you'll see here is 44.99 Kimwood Heritage Trail Phase Two. Um, you'll see in the CIP a lot of work is going on with the extension of the path from Bartmouth down to, or excuse me, from Kimwood Station down towards the city, the Bartmouth Trailhead, numerous different parts of that, but that's well underway. Part of that phasing is going on right now. And I'm fortunate that Ms. Heller is handling that and, and I have, don't have that. Um, big item that you'll see is the in the book is 4508. That's the Ardmore Avenue Community Center. And the feasibility study has been completed and design is underway. So, uh, and you'll see that in 2023, there's a commitment of over $8 million by this board to use ARP funding for that project. So that's a big, big project that Ms. Heller has been working on with, this, with the consultant and uh, staff. Another large item you'll see several projects under is our 4652. This is our stormwater facilities management project. This goes to help with our MS4 and our permit. And you'll see here there is numerous projects that are being done through this year. General reminder, you'll see that in the upcoming 2023 proposed CIP, we're proposing something that could be considered aggressive. Um, and part of that is, if you remember, when mentioned earlier, the CIP had been, we had cut the CIP because we weren't sure of the effects of COVID and financing and so forth and funding. So with that, some of these projects had been delayed. We have a permit that 
has a deadline. So we are working diligently with the engineering staff and consultants to try to complete our designs and bidding on certain projects. Several are, are ready to go and, go and so forth, but there are some that we're going to try to get in next year so we can meet the terms and conditions of our permit. Our hope is that uh, we'll be working in conjunction with conversations with the DEP to see if there might be an extension because of what has occurred in the world. But you'll see that, as I noted, it may seem a little bit aggressive, but we're trying to meet the, the terms of our permit. Um, if you go to page 13, this you'll see numerous projects on 13 and 14. These are a lot of what we do daily. These are the improvements to keep our sanitary sewer system working, whether it's improvements to the pump stations, <coughs> to our force mains, to our pumps, to our, to our grit removal systems, um, and some are are just our general operating where we have to have as staff does uh, as staff does certain improvements we have to be able to bill against them because these are long-term improvements so this a lot of this is our operating monies for keeping the sewer system moving along so that's as noted a rather a little bit larger CIP I think we're we're doing well considering uh, the demands of the economy uh, we're constantly looking for supply you know supplies supply we're dealing with supply chain issues permitting those type of things but I think uh, all parties involved the design team the engineering team our staff township staff outside vendors have been working diligently to try to keep us moving forward you know at a very active rate Thank you very much, Paul, for that uh, explanation uh, of many of the projects. Um, uh, it's time for questions from, from committee members or, or commissioners. I just want to, just a couple of observations. We, are, we have completed a lot of bridge, bridge projects. Unfortunately, Bridge 6 on Mill Creek Road is not on the list because it's county owned, just to make sure everybody understands that. That's not a township responsibility. Um, but it is going to get started, hopefully, uh, in 2022. Uh, and there are PennDOT projects in the township, which are not a township responsibility, mm -hmm. but Public Works is involved. Public Works works with the, the PennDOT contractors. Public Works will work with the county contractor to rebuild Bridge 6 and other county projects in the township. So Public Works is involved not only in our projects, but the projects of the county of PennDOT and, and other agencies. And if I may, Commissioner Zoff, since you've mentioned County Bridge 6, um, we work diligently to do our best to any questions because we do have infrastructure that is suspended under the bridge um, and we have our design standards for a curb. Uh, but we've, you know, the design team, township staff has worked diligently to, to do everything as quickly as possible, along with the support of the commissioners, which I'd like to thank, because I know that the commissioners have been reaching out to the county commissioners to try to help this project along. It was under design at the time that the hurricane hit, which helps, helps even though it's a long period. Tentatively, what we're being told is that their completion date is November of 2023 is what their their targeted completion date is at this time as you noted we work with them we will be doing our best to aid and move the project along in any way that we can and if we have any better news we will let you know great thank you um, i also want to point out to commissioners that um township engineer ed plachenik is available uh he is not in the room but he is available uh, on the zoom uh, as is our Vice President uh, Gavron. Um, so, any commissioners with questions for uh, Paul? Yes, Commissioner McComb. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Self. Uh, Paul, thank you for the presentation. Just, uh, I know you don't have a crystal ball, none of us do, but as a, a general overview from the procurement perspective, are you seeing any improvement in terms of supply chain, supply line, you know, issues? Because everything we're doing is sort of dependent on other people. So, it's very, I think it's difficult to predict when we'll get to completion on a lot of the projects, but just I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on it. It's, it's, I don't have a crystal ball. And, you know, 
with Public Works beyond the CIP, we have fleet and stuff like that, items like that, and we're constantly trying to procure. Day to day, it changes on what's available to us and what's not available to us. Um, you know, my fleet manager may say, I can get tires, I can't get tires. Um, I can get a whale, I can't get a whale. We've, we've placed orders for equipment and we've had the manufacturers come back to us afterwards and, and pull the contracts. Um, it's, it's a juggling act. I can say that PennDOT has reached out and so have other communities and so have we to everybody in the area to say, do you have the following? Because we're all having shortages and we're all working with each other to help in any way that we can to keep things moving along. Earlier this year, you may have noticed plates on Conchocan State Road at the Wawa there at Rock Hill. That's a state intersection. We, the township, had to provide plates and so forth, or PennDOT would have had to close it because they didn't have enough plates to keep it open. So it's interesting. I don't have a crystal ball. I think. I think we're seeing a little bit more of materials become available, a little more rental, but I, I couldn't tell you. We're doing our best to, if we sell, see something that we can grab, a project that we can move on because we have availability, we're, we're pushing. Sure. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Co Commissioner Courtney. Thank you, Commissioner Zell. Paul, just a couple of questions on some of the projects listed in the completed section. Um, the Ardmore Transit Center is listed as completed, but construction still <coughs> happening well, you what, distinguish what's completed? well the armor transit center in the sense of our commitment our yeah. obligations were completed um, the transit center as you know they're working on the high platform we've been working with septa and their contractor to coordinate um, there's going to be a need for the use of our parking lot here on the on the pu public safety side there's going to be a need by their contractor for closures lane closures on station avenue and so forth so we've been working diligently with them our commitment and our parts of the army transit center in the very beginning if you look at the older CP, that has been completed um, but we are working with them hand in hand I know one of the items that's close um, of concern for you is the Ardmore sign. We've spoken to them. We're supposed to, as they get a little further along, <coughs> we're going to sit down and work through the design and uh, hopefully be able to do something to raise it up since we can't raise the bridge. So, uh, but yes, our part is done. We are more in a oversight project management because you're on our property. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for the clarification and mentioning the sign. Maybe we can make it out of something that breaks trucks. I'd um, love to. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't get hit once a week, something's wrong. <laughs> uh, the last one is uh, VL8, the, the Gypsy Lane speed bumps. Just curious when construction will start there. That is out to bid. Okay. Once we have a bid received, you'll, you'll have that before you. So I would think that September you'll have the bid for approval and then we'll be able to put those in. As you know, we we asked for input as to their location. That was okay. So that's been put out for bid. Okay. If we get the bid in September, will there be time to put them in in the fall? There should be. Thank you. We should be able to do that until uh, we get too cold where the asphalt's not being produced. But even at that, it'll be limited run of asphalt because you're not paving a whole road. So that'll give us some flexibility if we do get into colder weather. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Commissioner Zell. Thanks, Commissioner Courtney. Other commissioners? questions or comments on the current uh, project work. Okay, um, th thank you, Paul. We'll be back to you uh, momentarily. Uh, next item that we wanna uh, move to on our agenda tonight is to hear from our Chief Financial Officer, Eric Traub, who will uh, sort of frame the discussion with, in terms of the finances. Uh, uh, you all have on page 15, the Capital Projects Fund cash flow. Uh, and so that will tell us what we have and what we'll need to move forward with the proposed uh, budget and plan. Eric? All right. Um, so um, what you're seeing on the screen here is a, um, uh, is a basic kind of flow of funds that we've used over the last five or six years to kind of talk about where are we getting the money to fund all these wonderful projects that Paul is talking to you about. Um, so as you recall, we did a bond issuance earlier this year, uh, it was successful, and we actually just 
very late in May uh, just started finally using those dollars. Um, the previous bond proceeds from 2020 uh, lasted a little bit longer than we had thought. So we basically are, are starting out with about 15 million, which was the new money bond proceeds. Um, and then we have other funds that we anticipate using throughout this year, which uh, then leaves us with a little bit over uh, $15.7 million. I talked with Paul, we look at the, um, the project still to come, and we come to an estimate on our projected spending for the rest of the year, which then leaves us with a balance at the end of 2022, which rolls into 2023. And we start the whole process over again about how much money we have, what other funds might be available. Liquid fuels is used to supplement township funds on our paving program. Um, which Paul spoke about, which is going to be starting off in a, in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, and then there's also those ARP contributions. As the, the manager alluded to, um, you know, the, the terms of ARP, which kind of free up dollars, are when you have what's called lost revenue, which to try to be succinct is, is a, a relatively complicated financial calculation of which we need to have our finalized audit for. That audit should be available for 2021. Uh, within the next week. Um, so we'll be able to bring you that lost revenue calculation for the 2021 fiscal year uh, in July. I don't expect it will be a very large number because as you recall, we had a very positive revenue year for 2021. Uh, that was on the back of a very negative year in 2020 where we had 12.7 million in lost revenue. So basically already half of the ARP monies could be freed up uh, just from our lost revenue in that first year. Um, the big number on here, this 26.8 million, that's the total what are termed as the A projects on the next, next piece of your agenda. So those are the projects where if everything goes well and our bids are, and our estimates are accurate, you know, that's how much money we think we're going to spend in township funds. So the balance between that and all of those funding sources is basically your funding gap for the CIP at the end of the year, which Ernie alluded to earlier, about $8.2 million. Um, how is that closed? If you look just down there at the bottom, you see it's either, you know, we could get some more liquid fuels dollars, although I don't anticipate that to be uh, a significant amount um, if there are transfers from other funds or additional allocations uh, decided by the board at a future date related to ARP. Uh, if we have projects that just kind of naturally move slower, we're always going to have that. That's probably going to be balanced somewhat by projects that um, might be a little bit more costly given the inflationary environment. Um, if you decide to eliminate or defer any projects, any additional funding we get from outside sources, um, and really what ends up being the majority of what funds those uh, funding gaps is additional debt issuance. Um, so right now we're at a, a, you know, a little bit over 95 million is our outstanding debt that's anticipated at the end of uh, 2022. That's up from the end of 2021 because obviously we issued 15 million in debt. Um, and we don't pay off near that amount in a year. That was all planned and discussed earlier. I think it's, um, you know, it's not any sort of cause of concern at this point. Um, so I think the township does have some flexibility in that regard. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any sort of questions you might have about financing before you get into the, the details of the individual projects. Thank you, Eric. Um, and you, you mentioned the, the $15 million that we borrowed, we agreed to borrow earlier this year, which was somewhat higher than we typically borrow at any given time. But we made a good decision if you know what's happening with interest rates. Yes, we, and we they, just, they have, they have gone up the significantly. Increase. So, we, 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 you know. We, we did well with that with yes. that, that new that new debt issuance. And so um, uh, do uh, any commissioners have any questions or comments for Eric about the capital cash flow? Yes, Commissioner Kramer. Um, thank you, Eric. Um, I have a question about the line under the capital project fund revenues, where you have the ARP contribution listed at 11 million. Is that based upon the amounts that we already allocated to capital projects, or is that an assumption about an additional 11 million that we're going to be allocating. That would be the former commissioner. So okay. if you add the, the number, it's just um, split between 2022 and 
2023, it will foot to the little chart that's at the bottom of what you've already allocated to those CIP projects. So that is only what you've already decided and voted on in January of this year, not any assumption about anything in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Grammer. Commissioner Courtney. Thanks, Mr. Zoff. Uh, Eric, I'm, I know it's a bit early in the overall budget planning process, but my recollection from last year is that our general fund balance was around 30 million. Um, if we were to cover the deficit of our CIP here entirely from general fund, would you would you expect that we would be dipping below our uh, our policy of 15 to 18 percent of our budget in general fund? I will be honest with you, Commissioner. I didn't anticipate that question, <laughs> so I don't have those numbers right in front of me. Um, I can email you about that probably 10 minutes after I sit back down. Um, but you know the one thing, and that's going to be that would be a, a board consideration is you know the quicker that you draw down the fund balance, the more you, you have less flexibility in the future moving forward. Um, so, but I, I will uh, I will send you that. I'll send it actually to the full board. Um, you know after I sit down this evening. So. Uh, sorry I didn't ask it earlier. No I problem. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Courtney. Other uh, commissioners with questions or comments. Uh, Vice President Gavron, who is in a secure location, but we have him by video. I don't know if it, how secure it is with uh, five little ones running around, but uh, I am I am I am sad that I can't be there tonight. Um, uh, thank you, and, and thank you, Eric, for that for the presentation. The question I have is about the I guess twenty six million or so of projects we have uh, slated for twenty twenty three. Historically, we've been really good about estimating the cost of projects. Um, obviously, recently that has changed, and we've we've been uh, our estimates have been under um, a lot of the times because of the increasing cost of of supplies. For the 2023 estimates, are these pulled from the plan from last year's budget, or are these new estimates that have been revised up due to increased costs? These have been revised, and um, Mr. McElhaney will jump in if, if needed. Um, but all department heads, uh, so Ms. Heller, Mr. Adams, uh, Superintendent McGrath, were asked, I think in uh, early May or even late April, to basically, they had to look at all of their projects, and they had to basically uh, perform a re-estimation of what was due for this year and for next year. Um, that was reviewed by public work staff, by the township engineer, um, by the manager's office as well, and, and kind of a summary meeting that we all held. Um, so we believe that these numbers reflect as best as we can the current environment, and uh, we do not think they are artificially low. Okay, great. Thank you. you and I'm sorry I didn't give, give you this question ahead of time to, to prepare, but do you have any sense how far up these numbers, you know, are they up? 10%, 20% from what was in the 2023 plan. Um, I would probably edge to Paul on that. Would you say like overall projects are 10 to 15% more? He's shaking his head yes, 10 to 15% right. higher. All right, great, thank you. Those were, those were my questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Vice President Gavron. Other uh, commissioners with questions or comments? Um, Eric, thank you for your presentation and thank you very much for the list at the, at, that shows how the deficit of 8.2 million can be addressed uh, uh, in, in, in for, for 2023 um, because we have a number of options available to us. Uh, and I also want to point out that your cash flow shows $27 million of township expenditures proposed for 2023, but the actual project expenditures will be higher than that because many projects include grants from other sources yes, and that's, that's not incorporated into these numbers so we get state grants we get county grants we're getting money from radner for the you to the uh, intersection on county line road there's other sources of money that 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 would that uh, the result is that these are there's even more than what's shown here being spent on township improvements and capital projects um uh, again, thank you very much, Eric. Um, why don't we uh, continue uh, this uh, next step in the workshop will be um, truly really a combination of items four and five on our agenda. So Paul, um, you'll take us through 
each of the categories. There are six overall categories for capital projects. First is administration, then we go to circulation. So if you could just cover the highlights of each category, and then there'll be an opportunity for Q&A among commissioners after, you know, in each category. Um, so the first one um, is administration in which the proposed expenditures are uh, 1.9 million for 2023. Thank you, Commissioner Zoloff. And just a quick review for the, for the commissioners and those that have the agenda. You'll see that the projects our statuses are A, B, or C. You'll see what, how, how that was established. The A projects are, are the projects that we are proposing. A lot of those are, are every year projects, the ones that are um, part of our every year, our road milling of the roads, um, overhead door replacements, many different things. Our B projects, which I'll point out to you as we move through this tonight, are the new proposed projects. And as mentioned earlier, our staff's looking for feedback. And that may be, yes, keep it where it is, move it out, give us more information, numerous things. The C projects, what they are, are there projects that at this time are not moving forward with either design or construction in 2023. They are listed in an out year. That out year could move, they can be moved in, they can be moved out, but that's so that the projects are recognized and they're here for um, everybody to know that they do exist and what they are. But to start, if you, as Commissioner's Office said, administration. So 1.8 million in new projects there. Our one of the largest ones you'll see is 4025. And what that is, is that's our facilities improvement. And as I n n mentioned earlier, a lot of this is how we make repairs to a lot of the buildings and the, and the smaller projects. In the supplemental sheet that you received, you'll see that it has a breakdown of 4025 for you this evening. And one of the big items that you see in there is a lot of work on the ADA, uh, the Ada Much uh, building up in Brimar the Bryn Mawr Community Center, uh, work on the uh, jail pre-action, uh, some work on our, our air conditioning systems down at Kegel. Um, and then you have in there, you'll also see emergency or unforeseen items. That allows staff to make repairs to buildings so we have funding. So that's one of the large items you'll see. As I mentioned earlier, 4024, that's the intersection at Old, uh, Old Lancaster and Montgomery Avenue. That'll be moving forward. Um, another is, you'll see is 4095. Again, that is another area where essentially Public Works pays for numerous repairs to the complexes, to the buildings, to equipment um, throughout. Um, Township. An item you'll see here to bring to your attention is item 4097. That's your affordable housing. That's listed as a C, but in 2023, this is for consideration. You'll see $115,000 listed there. And what that is is Commissioner Grimes has been working diligently with staff, with a solicitor, um, with some groups about taking the cottage up at Rolling Hill which as you know was the home of the conservancy but they've now moved to the old home of the barns and we as the township have taken that back in speaking with commissioner grimes he suggested that that be turned that cottage be turned into affordable housing for possibly a first responder or a fireman from the gladwin fire company so we have put together an estimated cost of about one hundred fifteen thousand dollars to convert that into a usable residence because it has been converted in for the use of the conservancy. Um, if you were to walk through, you'll find nowhere to shower, nowhere to, to, to basic amenities. The ki there's really not a kitchen. There's numerous things there. So that's something that we would be looking for feedback on is that affordable housing and um, whether the board is supportive of starting to move in that direction. The next item below that you'll see is a B item. 
and that be item is the proposed patio. I'm going to catch Commissioner McKeon off off guard here, and um, and I'm scold. Of walking behind you. Well, but the, the <laughs> item B that we're talking about is the proposed patio for the Belmont Hills Library. Um, you'll see that in 2023 we put money for design of thirty thousand dollars, and then in 2024 as you wouldn't be committing to there's a number of four hundred thousand dollars review as we would have to do retaining walls and other stuff is what the township engineer has has indicated so this is a b item we'd be looking for some feedback from the board as to is it as we have it laid out here is it moving backwards that would be for you guys the other new item that you'll see there and i'm only this is really not for discussion it's only because i'm i'm kind of uh setting Eric up for his financial report later later this year it's you'll see it says public works equipment we we as the caretakers of the CIP put a page there because we're starting to see the equipment funds um, dwindle um, because as you know it's had different levels of funding so we put a page there that during later discussions with Eric you may wish to f add funding to the equipment fund one-time monies or create a page where we start paying for some equipment out of the cip that's for a later date not for discussion not looking for any direction i'm just queuing eric up for the uh troubles to come or conversations to come so we brought that to his attention and uh he told us to leave his office no he but uh <laughs> So that's, that's why that's there. So that's what we have going on in the administration. Um, some of the larger projects, some of the things. But you'll see uh, $1.8 million there. Commissioner Zoff, I don't know if you want to take questions on this section or you want to move on to the next section. Uh, I would like to take some questions on this section, Paul, and I'm going to start. So um, on 4025 facilities improvements, mm -hmm. um, thanks for the detail, on, which is on page 26. Uh, where you list uh you know 10 or so so um two of them are in my ward um the ada much selective repointing and painting envelope repairs by the way it's not the ada, ADA. i always it catch myself a capital board. small da because the, it's named after ada. ada much um so is that in order to provide a parking space for the gator that's used by Bryn Mawr Beautiful when we had the, the meeting at that location six or nine months ago. Uh, and is it led to this proposed, these proposed repairs? No, no it, that, that conversation didn't lead to these, to, to these repairs. This conversation had been occurring about the exterior of the building. Um, you, as you know, some of the areas were overgrown with some vines and stuff. Right. So we've discovered uh, housekeeping and out, outside restoration that needs to be done so that the building doesn't fall into more disrepair. Got it. Okay. So that's what I just would is. point out that when the improvements to the second floor and the first floor of the Bryn Mawr Community Center are completed, it is Eldernet's plan to move the food pantry into the community center so the Ada Much building will not have a use. At least that's the case at this time. So just want you to be aware of that as you uh, well, consider this is, though the plan for repairs to that building. Well, this is to keep the exterior so that we stay watertight and we don't start to con have internal damage and then i don't think you want a building with peeling paint and the, the you know the gutters falling off next to the, you know the library out there and such okay thank you um the next item for the Bryn Mawr community center it says exterior painting for seventy five thousand dollars it's a stone building so that's is it, it's is a, just painting the trim that seems no you like, have to understand uh, a there's lucrative painting contract that okay. is just a generic for the title that we pick there's the other woodwork the stone paint pointing different things that'll be going on but we don't go into a full description of the entire so we give it a title okay okay thank you very much on those two items do any commissioners have any questions or comments in this category of the capital projects commissioner Courtney. thank you again commissioner Zoff. uh i'm wondering if you can guess which one i'm going to ask you about 4072 shuffle green yes 
we voted to have 120,000 allocated for this coming year. And I see it remains in category C and that the funds have been bumped out a year. Um, why was that decision made? When speaking with uh, staff, the manager and so forth, um, there have you been little prog progress as to the master plan and any plans and discussions on shuffle. So the question was realistically, would would we get to a project this year of anything of that nature? So in our you know, our conversations, we decided to move it one year. If the board wishes to move it back a year because you feel that you'll be in a position this year to move forward with a project, we can do so. All right. I'll take it up with our director of building and planning over the next few months. You know, okay. if, if, you, if you have that forward motion, please, we'll, we'll make the accommodation. All right. Thank you. And, and Commissioner Courtney, one other approach here would be to move it to an A project, not a C, but the... I think the staff judgment on the timing is, he, you know, Paul has explained. So, and as you said, you'll discuss it further. Um, thank you. Other yes, no commissioners way. with comments? Commissioner Kramer. Um, actually, I have a question for you first. Um, is this the appropriate time for me to raise issues about things that are not in here that perhaps should be? Yes. <coughs> okay. Um, so, Paul, I, the first question I have is, um, what is the basis for the amount chosen for the um, sustainability infrastructure fund? The, um, the, uh, on which page, which one is that? Uh, so Commissioner Kramer, if I could, you, want to know you asked my question you asked, I should have said, this is a time to ask about new projects in this category. In administration. Yeah, oh, the new sustainability oh, sorry. category As we move is in through. it. Sustainability um, project is in a different category. We're, we're okay. getting there. So then I do have questions related, if we're just talking about administration. There's um, uh, number 4093, which is the emergency generator upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, where is that located? That emergency generator for the uh, the township administration building is in the build is in the shed outside of here. Um, the uh, in the next to what looks like a garage it's contained okay. within there and the other one that's listed under there further out is the one in the public safety building which is located uh, t towards the back of the building hidden inside the back back there okay um, one of the questions I have and this is going to apply to a couple of these issues with um, emergency generators is that have we explored um, alternatives to doing these upgrades, um, such as um, possibly in installing solar panels that could generate and energy that could be put into an emergency generator, and is that being looked at in at the same time we're talking about just upgrading something? We have not per se looked at that. If the it is the will of the board, we will uh, put together a number to compensate for what would be needed power wise to provide the demands that are needed with those generators um, the thing that may be of concern is the ability or the space to put the number of solar panels that may be needed because we have had township properties surveyed for the ability to put solar and the consultant has come back that we're not a prime candidate for a large volume of solar. So I don't know if we could provide enough to cover what the generators do. But if it's the will of the, yeah, the one of the board, we will put together a number in correspondence with whatever generator for us to see if solar would work and the cost associated with it. I think that from my perspective at least we should be investigating that because if we're going to be spending money on um, improving our township properties we should be trying to do it in as sustainable way for the future as possible so I would love to see what the alternatives are in that regard um, and I don't know how anybody else feels but that's how I feel about that one and I think that in this category um, that's the only question um, that I have Thank, Thank you. you, Commissioner Kramer. Other commissioners with questions or comments? 
uh, other Commissioner Kramer. Thank you. I just had, this is more of a thought than a, a question, just that regarding the Belmont Hills um, patio, the, for the second year of the 2024, the $400,000, that might be an expenditure that we could ask the Lower Marion Library Foundation to consider raising. So funds. Commissioner Kramer, could you um, speak a little I'm sorry. more closely I'll, to your I'll, microphone? I'll email you about it. It's, okay. it's not important right now. But my, I do have another question about the, um, the affordable housing, the cottage at, at Rolling Hill. Does that, would that have, uh, would that house one family or how many people could it house? When we surveyed the property, it's not a rather, it's not a large property. Mm -hmm. It would be, if it was a family, it'd be a small family, or maybe one or two, say, firefighters or something of that nature. Um, it does have several bedrooms. As I noted, it has no bathroom facility right. and no kitchen and so forth. So it's, it's it, at one time, was a caretaker's cottage for a single individual, and our goal is to at least get back to that. Okay. I think it's a, a great idea for a project. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Kramer. Commissioner McKeon. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Zello. So I just wanted to comment briefly on the, the Belmont Hills Library patio extension. Um, Director McElhinney, thank you very much for including it in, in the, uh, the packet. Um, as far as I know, I think the only yes. drawing or design for this was something I drew on the back of an index card. So it's in a kind of a rough uh, stage, very uh, raw right now. It needs, certainly we need to be fleshed out to see if it's feasible. Then we get the uh, better idea of what the scope would be, the cost, the timing, and these are things I could also uh, circle back with uh, the library chair, Commissioner Kramer, who just uh, mentioned uh, potential funding ways. So I think it, it needs to be uh, fleshed out a, a lot more to see how it's funded, if it's funded, w w how that could all work out. But I appreciate its inclusion in this list right now to get the um, the conversation started. So thank you. That drawing was right. ready for bid package. We 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 ran with it. And my kids will say, I don't know how to make toast so you wouldn't expect the design drawing to be very good no either, there, but it gave us an idea as to the area and so forth so that we could get a uh, not a you know drilled down but an order of magnitude and that's what we're working with here all right well thank you thanks commissioner mccann others um commissioner kramer and before you uh, comment again commissioner kramer i would just observe that in terms of emergency generators with solar panels Generators are often needed when there are storms and power outages and there isn't sun. And so I don't know how that would work because the generators would have to, they're essential to keeping essential buildings operating. So um, not to engage in a debate necessarily, but just to provide that feedback. I'm well aware of that and I also know that you can store the energy and use it later. So that is something that certainly has to be looked at. Um, but I apologize for not having raised all my concerns. I didn't realize that affordable housing was under administration. Um, but what I did want to raise in connection with the affordable housing issue is that we've authorized um, grant applications to the county for a couple of affordable housing projects. We aren't going to know we don't know yet and we aren't going to know for a little bit whether or not we're going to receive that funding. But I did want to just raise the fact that um, depending on the outcome of those funding applications, there are um, a couple of significant projects for affordable housing that I think should be A projects, which we hope would be funded. And I wanted to raise that now so that once we know more about the funding applications, we can have further discussion about it. Um, Ernie, do you want to uh, respond? Uh, sure. Uh, Commissioner, we generally don't put projects in that are sort of a hope. You know, we need to know what, what the scope is and we need to know pretty much what the financing is. Certainly, if we happen to get awarded uh, any of those requests that we've made to the county, then we would work them into the uh, CIP once we have that information. But we wouldn't list them right now because we have no idea whether we'll receive a dime or not. I understand that. I just um, did discuss this with um, President Sinai, and he suggested that I raise these issues now so that depending on the outcome of the 
the funding, we can have further discussion about these issues, and particularly um, the expansion of an ex existing affordable housing and a property acquisition that we put in grant requests for. You will certainly have additional discussion on your uh, CIP. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Kramer noted, and I think it's a step-by-step -step process. That That's correct. The county award is the next step. That's correct. Or, or, or not, or whatever amount they to choose to award. Um, other commissioners with questions or comments? Okay. Hold Seen, on. Commissioner, uh, you have on uh, the uh, screen? Vice President Gavrin. Thank you, Commissioner Zeloff. Thank you for whoever pointed that out to Commissioner Zeloff. Um, <laughs> so I just had a couple of questions, and I don't know if these are for Paul or Ernie with respect to the cottage at Rolling Hill Park. Um, you know, obviously providing affordable housing for our volunteer firefighters is, uh, you know, is something that's really important. It's something that, you know, our volunteer firefighter force is, um, you know, invaluable um, to this township. And, you know, I, I, where I've seen it work, and I think Gladwin, if I'm correct, is one of those, is one of the um, firehouses that does have housing for firefighters on site. And it, it seems to me that when we have, I don't, I don't know if I should call it dormitory or bunks or whatever it is that, that house multiple um, volunteer firefighters who may be young, don't have families yet. Those seem to be a very efficient use and was wondering rather than creating a single family home here, whether this would be possible to create kind of a, an area that could house five or six firefighters. And I guess alongside with that, is there a need for additional housing for the volunteer firefighters, given that Gladwin already has um, significant housing? So, you want to respond to well, that? I'll start. Uh, uh, Commissioner, the, the Gladwin currently a has single a family house, but they also have uh, bunk space in the uh, actual fire station. Right. So, they've got a little combination of both. Um, certainly, it's something that uh, perhaps uh, Paul could explore as we uh, do the design for the, for the Rolling Hill Cottage and, and have some discussions with the uh, fire companies. Uh, they kind of like to have the bunk space in the actual fire station so that those guys are there and ready to uh, to respond. Uh, um, but it's a discussion that can be had. And it, it, I don't I don't know enough about the operations to say whether it what makes more sense. Um, I think you know at a cost of one hundred and fifteen thousand, I think is what what um, is listed here. Um, you know that that is expensive to to renovate one home for you know for a single family where if it's five or six firefighters i think it's a it's another story entirely the other question on this was have i know i know once the conservancy moved out of this site um we really haven't had a, a quote tenant for it have other organizations inquired about it has there been any other thought about other um organizations that serve the residents of lower marion that that could use this property that wouldn't necessarily need you know, significant renovations to this building? My knowledge, unless uh, Commissioner Grimes has, uh, who brought this project forward, has, uh, has heard any other interest. And, and if, I, if I may elaborate through, you know, I said single family home, but I also noted it could possibly take two or three volunteers. The question then becomes, are we stacking them like logs? What's the level of comfort? Is it two in a room, one in a room? Those were things that would have to be worked out. It's not a, a large home. And one of the reasons we're running into such larger costs is, as I noted, there's no, there's not a, you can't shower in the facility. Um, you can't really cook in the facility. So we're, we're taking spaces that have been converted into office and converting them back. So, and one of the reasons why this was even um, brought up, not brought up, but, you know, we now have a cottage that at times is, for lack of a better term, all by itself in the middle of the woods. So care t some type of caretaker would be benefit us to have eyes, eyes in the building. Yeah, no, that, that makes complete sense. And, and the reason I asked these questions was because it is such a significant cost, as you said, to add plumbing, to add a kitchen, to add all of those elements that might not already be there. Um, while in concept, I think it's a great idea. And I think uh, Commissioner Grimes was spot on in, in introducing this. I wonder if as it's been explored, 
whether that really makes sense and whether it's an efficient use of resources and time because that building is not set up that way. But you know, with with the added benefit of potentially having a caretaker eyes on the park, whatever it may be, that that may also tilt the scale in that direction as well. So the, the, this is very helpful hearing hearing uh, the comments about it. So thank you. But with that also understanding numerous conversations, myself, the assistant manager, and, and the lister, and some of it is to determine, we haven't really determined the complete setup and use because there's been a lot of conversation as to was it allowable, you know, what needed to be done. So we're still, we're not, we're not designed 100% in concrete or anything of that nature. There's still a lot of discussion that needs to occur. And I, and I hope and I expect some of that conversation will be with the Gladwin Fire Company. Um, so thank you. Thanks, Vice President, President Gavrin. Others? Uh, seeing none, um, Paul, let's move on to circulation. Um, a very large category with proposed $4.8 million in capital projects, including our uh, road uh, milling and paving, sta road stabilization, which you referred to earlier, and the uh, all-encompassing category of traffic uh, upgrades uh, and improvements, which has a supplemental uh, section in the back of our packet, which runs several pages. So with that said, Commissioner Zoloff has highlighted, a lot of these projects are, this, are, are yearly projects that we undertake, our road milling and road construction. As you can see, we haven't listed that uh, 1.5 million dollars of township funds this year there was a very lengthy discussion with the CFO and with the manager as to is that the is that the right number because as you know our bid came in this year um, and took us all a little bit uh, by surprise but in speaking with the CFO and the manager looking at our liquid fuels looking at our possible contributions from the utility uh, we feel as though we're still comfortable with that contribution of township funds at this time. Um, so that there was a lot of discussion, but that's one of our yearly things. Another thing you'll see is the municipal parking lot repair. That's gone up a little bit in the last year. And as I noted earlier, you have a new director. He's sprucing up, he's sprucing up the house is all I can say. Um, I, I got him out of my office and he keeps coming back to discuss these things. <laughs> But I'll, 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 I'll live with that. Uh, another big item you'll see here is the Rock Hill Road, uh, Belmont Avenue Transportation Service Area Improvement. So we're, we're continuing to, on our design work for that. We're continuing to go to task with Norfolk Southern and their comments as to the bridge. I did receive today, and I have not made the manager aware of this, I've, I've received some correspondence from the county about right away and acquisition same as you had uh, several months ago with a little bit on Rock Hill Road so I do I do have to discuss that with the manager big item here as I noted earlier was the road stabilization we monitored it for for years but we've gotten to a point that it's been deferred deferred we really need to move forward with that we even had to uh, look for an emergency permit because we have a sinkhole um, and that, that was submitted uh, this morning and, re and we received approval this afternoon. Um, a, another big item that you'll see there is the 4236. That's the township wide traffic network uh, um, evaluation. In there, you will see everything from our green light go grants to intersection improvements to crosswalks to sidewalks, all of the, the Villanova project for County Line Road. All of that's contained in, in that supplement and be, you know, if you have questions, please ask. One of the things I'd like to point out is the 4237, which is the bridge maintenance program. And if you look at your supplement, you'll see the first thing is $100,000 for the Mill Creek Road Bridge, the S Bridge. I don't know, um, most of you should be familiar with it. We have that sharp turn. Um, if you've taken note of it, you'll see that it gets hit quite often. Well, this year we had significant damage done to the bridge by a large truck uh, whose company name will remain uh, oh, wow. unanimous. 
but did significant amount of damage. So we worked with the township engineer um, because we have monies coming in from insurance and so forth. What can we do to kind of soften that curve so that it's not constantly being hit? You'll see here the $100,000 reflects those changes to the bridge to help with deterring accidents that occur there between people sliding because it's too sharp when it's wet, hitting the abutments because of the sharpness. So that's one of the big, big items that you'll see in this year's um, CIP or in this 4237. And then 4236 is the sustainable infrastructure. And what that $100,000 represents are several things. That we're gonna have cost probably for the Kegel chargers that are gonna transfer over into 2023 because we have not put that out to bid yet, or it is out to bid, but we haven't awarded it. Um, that those monies, as I mentioned, as I spoke to the manager when we were going through this, by September I'll have a better idea as to how far those charging stations will be because it's more than just charging stations. I have to do some retaining wall work and some other stuff because of possible future growth. So we're looking at expansion and growth as we take these on and then this also included that was brought forward by paloma a multi-building envelope study uh, to look at all the buildings and see if what we can do to provide energy efficiency to the buildings looking at insulation windows uh, alternate green solutions so that's what's in that 4246 that summarizes as quickly as possible our circulation uh, plan for 2023. Great, thank you, Paul. I'd note that uh, 4217 road stabilization has is included in the manager's memo as a candidate for uh, ARP allocation. Um, do commissioners have any questions or comments on this category uh, circulation? Commissioner Kramer. Um, thank you. I, I I do have a question about where the proposed number for the sustainability infrastructure program 4246 came from that the, as noted earlier early late april may each of the directors and department heads and and those receive their sheets they we send them out and they they work on those numbers and present those numbers this number uh was given to us by uh paloma and um and as reflected in, in the summary as, as, as submitted. Well, I guess my comment is that that number seems a little bit low um, for, since we're going to be having our sustainability plan, we hope by the beginning of next year. And I would hope that we would have a little more of a buffer in there to do more than as soon, once we have our sustainability plan. And I think that that number should be increased um, and we should revisit it and rethink it. We can reach out and speak with Paloma. And okay. Thank you, Commissioner Kramer. Others, uh, this this would be the time to ask about the, you know, 10 or 12 pages of traffic improvements that start on page 28 of your packet, um, because that's where the long list of um, traffic network uh, upgrades is included um, uh, and commissioner kramer i'd point out that the the cip from a year ago was approved with 42 46 at 100,000 for 22 and nothing beyond so this is uh, increasing it to 220 for 24 and at and, and 100 for 23 which was not included a year ago um, others with questions or comments? Commissioner McComb. Thank you, Commissioner Sell. Um, Paul, just a, a, a quick comment on 4236 BC2, the St. Asaph's Road traffic calming. And again, just a, it's a quick comment. I know when you name it, you have to come up with a name, so it does, it's not all inclusive, but my thought is that with the expansion, the developments going on presidential, St. Asaph's connects to that it's all sort of related. It's related to what PennDOT might be doing with the roundabout. So I know this is just a, a short description of the project, but 
depending on what PennDOT does, it, it could expand or, or change a bit depending on those circumstances. Understood. And when BC2 was created, and this was actually created, this was a um, cheat sheet that we created sure. internally, the track, because we had um, questions and so forth coming to traffic safety, the test. So we combined it. And when that originally came, that was the first consideration. So it just hasn't been changed. And when we have our, you know, every six week meeting, we talk about it and it could be this. Could be okay. that. So yes, you are correct and we are aware of that. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Commissioner Thank McComb. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I would like to um, uh, identify in 4215 municipal parking lot repair. And uh, Paul, you've uh, recognized that we have a new parking sheriff and uh, Jerry is uh, uh, approaching the job with great enthusiasm uh, and energy, and it's very welcome. Um, so lot seven in Bryn Mawr has a beautiful but very old iron fence that is in need of repair, um, perhaps replacement, but I'd prefer repair. So given the uncertainty of that, I'd like to ask staff to include that uh, in 2024, there is a, I guess, a plug number of 150,000, and perhaps that can be, that project can be incorporated into that number once we know more about what to do uh, with that fence on that lot. And so that's why I'm not suggesting it for 2023. There's enough uncertainty and enough projects going on, but I think 2024 for that project, I see Jerry nodding his head, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity, as you know, we spoke earlier this afternoon. Between then and now, I had the opportunity to speak with Jerry and uh, indicate, you know, the, the, the discussion that we had had, and, and he and I will be working on updating his description in the book and so forth. So, Great. Thank you. Okay. Shall we move on to public safety, um, which is the, the, the third category? And, a, and, a, and a, just just a list of three projects, but but important ones. So, as Commissioner Zoloff has indicated, three projects. First is your um, fire apparatus replacement fund. This is for the new Union Avenue or Union the new Union engine for the Union Fire Company, um, and you can see that's listed at seven hundred twenty-eight thousand. The next item you'll see is 4405, and in your supplement, you'll see uh, a listing of the items that make up that $273,000, and these are all the contributions by this board and the township to helping maintain the fire companies, the, the buildings, and those type of items. And in this, we also have some repairs to the fire tower that all the companies use for training and so forth. Um, there is a little bit of money put aside in case there's an unforeseen that one of them would run into an issue through the year and it allows us to appropriate funds to them and so forth. But you can see the, uh, the biggest is in, in that list is $200,000 and that's for the engine, red, engine room overhead doors. What they're finding is the doors with adding the insulation and everything, the doors are extremely heavy. They've had issues with the with them, the springs breaking and so forth, and then they can't get out during the, in an emergency. So they're looking at the firehouses that have space to have doors that open side to side. And this is the beginning of that phasing in of that type of door. Got it, great, thank you. Questions? Uh, for for Paul on this category of um, public safety, I think your the total of the supplement is 423,000, but the 2023 category is 273,000. So maybe some of it rolls into 2024. Sure. We but we do. Well, I'll verify the number and just make sure that we're accurate and it will be reflected properly in in the fall. Okay. All right, next is services to people, which is um, primarily our park system and our community centers. Um, the biggest category of expenditures of 12.9 million. So I'll do my best, but we do have Ms. Heller here. 
to, to, to guide me and help me as needed because, as you know, that's often. Um, but you can see that she has, as I noted earlier, they're very busy over there in parks. Um, they're, they're constantly doing a lot of projects and moving forward projects. So some of the larger projects that you'll see here is 4477 that's the bicycle and pedestrian path system that's parkside avenue to the kimwood trail um, that's the completion of the south ardmore park path system um, so that's where that those monies are going another large item you'll see is a one million three hundred ten thousand that's the ashbridge park memorial master plan that's the implementation and that is repairs to both the interior renovations and so forth my understanding is that there has been money supplemented by the ARP funds to help with that cost. And then you'll see as you go down, she has her normal playground replacement because they have a life cycle um, and have to be replaced. Next item, you'll see the beginning of the Kimwood, Her uh, next phase of the Kimwood Heritage Trail. This is, that 400,000 is the Bartmouth Trailhead. Um, that's, that's what that represents. And then in 2024, you'll start seeing some of the um, additional trail work. 4500 is the Conley site master plan. If you're familiar with the trail, there's a section below it that was donated to the township by the Conleys when the property was sold uh, that now houses the uh, condominiums along uh, the river down there. Um, this plan is a how do we get from the trail down to the Conley property? This is a switchback trail um, and numerous improvements. This also includes the Norfolk Southern Tunnel and so forth. And you can see as you start to move into the out years, um, it, it increases. We, in speaking to Donna today, we have to look at the, the projected 2025 number. Um, Donna has indicated that she thinks that we may be off on that and have to change that. We'll make the correction and that'll be shown in the fall. Um, then you have the normal parks and rec stuff and then you get down to 4508, which is the Armour Avenue Community Center and the Center for Positive Aging in Lower Moraine. You'll see that in 2023, because as I noted earlier, the um, consultant has been finished designs underway and so forth that eight million nine hundred sixty five thousand dollars is shown in 2023 the board has committed those funds through the ARP 2024 you'll see another six million almost six and a half million those funds are uncommitted that is township funds the board has not committed anything from AARP towards those um, and then the last item there is the athletic field or new baseball field that the board's been talking about. I know that um, Ms. Heller has been working with the property owner to try to discuss acquisition of the property or showing between 2023 and 2024, a little over uh, $2 million for acquisition and, and building of that field. Um, so that's kind of service to the people. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to kind of step away. If you have questions, Donna is probably better suited to answering those. Um, so I'll answer, I'll answer what I can, but I'll leave that to Ms. Heller. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, uh, and Donna, I'm sure there'll be some questions and comments from commissioners. I would note that in this, ca this category, Ernie's memo, suggests that in the future we can consider additional funds for the Ardmore Avenue Community Center, improvements to Ashbridge, the South Ardmore Park playground equipment that would be replaced, as well as if we move forward on a new baseball field, all those could be considered to be funded by ARP funds. Um, there's a lot here, Donna, um, but why don't we start with questions and comments from commissioners. Um, Commissioner O'Neill. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Heller, and uh, Paul, for the overview. Great. Um, my question pertains to uh, number 4466, the uh, park tree inventory and planting plan. And this is a follow-up mostly to the work at the Harrison Preserve as we look toward the final version of our master plan there. 
um, that will, of course, uh, mention what trees or how we tackle some replantings there. Um, just curious why it's flatlined to 23, um, both in terms of just Heritage or broadly, why we're not putting any funds into um, native plant purchases, staking, deveining, use of pesticides, herbicides. So we actually, in the in the official CIP book, there, it will be funded, but it's through alternate sources. This is just reflecting township dollars. Great, um, okay, so the, all external. Okay, <coughs> and thank you. And my second question um, would have to do with, um, I guess, either the Ashbridge Memorial Park Master Plan, and that is the incorporation of the um, the pickleball courts and where we stand on that. And is that reflected in the master plan at this point or an edification of it? Uh, the pickleball courts are in this year's CIP. We should have the, the new, the funds that were, were award, awarded by the board last year. Um, those those funds are ARP funds, I believe. Yeah. Um, we should have that under construction. We're hoping by early fall, we're, the engineer's office is working with our uh, court contractor to get the design, uh, grading, et cetera, uh, correct, and, and we'll get that out to bid later. Great, okay, so installation for 22? 22, correct. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Neill. Other commissioners with questions or comments? Um, Donna, um, is there, let's go to 4509, the, the skate park, which we did include in last, in the 2022 um, CIP. Um, is there still, uh, is the parks and still trying to determine a location? Yes. So that's uncertain at this point? Correct. Okay. There's multiples. Um, and uh, I guess I just bring up a $2 million plus for a baseball field. That's uh, extraordinary. Yes. Um, yeah, this, the site is very tight. The land acquisition uh, of a parcel is required, uh, and it's uh, a significant grade change on that site, so retaining walls would be necessary to get a full 90-foot diamond. Uh, hopefully the funds uh, uh, for next year would give us a real determination of actually what will fit there um, and, and with uh, economies of scale. Is a 60 foot diamond better than a 90 foot? <coughs> those yeah. types of things. Say that again, the last sentence. 60 foot versus a 90, what would fit most appropriately? If on you said a 90, but. A 90 is preferred, that's the dollar amount that's in here. But a 60 um, is an option. It, it, exactly. If, so if a smaller field. Exactly, yeah. which would be less expensive. Okay. So I guess when you have more information, you'll be providing it. Great. Okay. Yes. Um, can you tell us more about the, um, I guess the, in, with, in regards to the Conley site master plan, um, and that involves a bridge and a switchback trail and improvements to the tunnel. Yeah, the, the Connolly site has a lot of moving parts, um, mainly uh, Norfolk Southern's uh, easement is required to make any of these improvements at Connolly um, a, a go. Um, so you basically would get down to the bottom and wouldn't be able to go anywhere because you can't um, tr tr go through the Norfolk Southern tunnel which takes you to the river. Um, their requirement from to make an accessible trail from the Kimwood Heritage Trail, there's a, approximately a 300 foot grade change to get down to that area, which requires, um, you know, a, a, it's not an official ADA slope, but it, it does require a number of uh, <coughs> returns uh, to get you down there in, in a comfortable manner um, down the hill, and, and then you would be able to access under Norfolk Southern to uh, the Pencoid property and, and across the Pencoid Bridge. Given the, uh, given the expense, I mean, a $5 million project over three years, and Paul suggested it might be more, um, what are the prospects for obtaining grant funding for, for some of this? Uh, I do believe that a large a number amount of this. So the, the numbers are reflected in here. I believe that the out year of 2025 is going to be significantly lower than that 4.5. 
Um, but a large amount of the uh, total cost of the project is, is more is going to be through grant funds. Um, most of the funding is going to require a match. Okay. Seems to me there are some projects where we make them contingent on grant funding. It seems to me that this would fit into that category. Um, okay. Other commissioner questions or comments? Let's see, Vice President Gavron has. Uh, this location is so secure, he's not with us anymore. Um, uh, Commissioner O'Neill? Sorry, second bite at the apple, my apologies. Um, in looking at 4510 on the baseball field proposal, um, I'd like, if we could, I'd like to shift that to a B until, or at least until all neighbors and other institutions that are there know about this project, because I think that's going to come as a really big surprise. Okay, thank you, Commissioner O'Neill. I don't think she had it. Commissioner McComb? Uh, thank you. Thought I saw your hand. Sure. Um, Don, I have a question when you have a minute. Sure. Um, on 44, 4499, the, the notes, um, it, it talks about, uh, again, I'm I'm not going to hold you to this, but it says additional funds have been included for expansions, including Norfolk Southern property acquisition and Upper Riders Ferry Road improvements in 2022 and 2023. Is is anything going to be expended in in 2022? No, there's there is a reappropriation from 22 into 23 okay. um, for those. Since as of right now, we don't anticipate any full closure on those, um, but. We'll pretty we'll know in a few months. Right. I I spoke to uh, Mr. Leswing today, and I I think that particularly with the Upper Riders Ferry project, that has been rolled into 2023. That's my understanding. Um, a follow up on uh, the about the skate park is the Conley master plan um, 4500. Is that still a possible location for a, a skate park? It is uh, honestly. I don't think it's an ideal location for a skate park. It, it is potentially a very good location for a dog park. Um, I, we find that people that utilize skate parks like to get there by their own means, um, and, and that location doesn't really provide that opportunity. Um, so I, I, it is a possibility, yes. Is it ideal? I'm not quite sold. Yeah, I, I think that was a comment made at a, a recent hearing about it has to be you know, some some place where people who use it can get there under their own steam. So I, I um, okay, but it's a it's an exciting um, area. I mean, a possible location for a boathouse. I mean, there are a lot of things that could happen down there, and, and um, I think the neighbors down there would be pretty receptive to it. So, right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks, Commissioner McComb. And it sounds like there's quite a bit of work still to do to identify a location for a skate park. I know we had a lot of discussion about it six or nine months ago, but uh, it's not an easy thing to find a place. Okay, um, other commissioner comments? Seeing none, we'll uh, move on then to uh, storm drainage. Uh, back to Paul and uh, one job number, but with lots and lots and lots of projects uh, identified in a, in a supplement in the back of our packet. Up on page 27. So, as noted earlier, it, um, I termed it 4652 as might look a little bit aggressive in the way of funding, but as I noted earlier, there are many things that came into play with this. Uh, as as you remember. Many of the projects were deferred during uh, the COVID funding of the CIP one year. We are coming to the end of our permit, so we're trying to uh, meet the terms of that permit. As I noted, working and discussing with the, uh, the uh, DEP about maybe an extension of the permit and so forth, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, the board has 
added funding to this of $636,000 through ARP funds. So that is shown. If you look at your supplement, um, as Commissioner Zoloff has indicated on page 27, <coughs> you will see several, several things. The largest of those projects is the pollution reduction plan implementation at Rolling Hill Park along Mill Creek Park, which is under design. You next, you'll see um, Centennial Road at Mary Waters Ford and West Mill Creek Park. Both of those are the projects that are, are ready to go. They're the projects that the money from ARP has been notated against. And then you start going through and you'll see numerous other projects, another six or so, which are our Kaggle complex, the Hollow Road pump station project, those type of things. And then the very bottom are the yearly costs that we run into, our, our minor roadway improvements, our inlet repairs, um, emergency money, our MS4 support, where we go through, make sure we're, you know, we're doing our proper paperwork, we're doing our outreach to the public, those type of things that are a requirement, storm sewer lining, and then we have money for complaint investigation. So the bottom of that supplement is kind of my operating monies to keep working on our stormwater facilities. As noted earlier, it is an aggressive plan. Um, we do have our township engineer, Mr. Plachenik, available for any questions um, with these plans and, and if you have concerns, con questions, any of that nature. But that's, that's the, uh, our, the, really what storm drainage is uh, within the CIP. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, Ernie's memo identifies this category as one where we could allocate more ARP funds and actually almost two million additional funds and, and additional funds for 2024. Um, so I think is it the, those pollution reduction plan implementation projects are all MS4 generated projects. Can you take a minute to explain what is the plan at Rolling Hill Park along Mill Creek? I'm going to turn to our township engineer to explain more the in-depth of the plans. Because there is a uh, private property at the bottom of Rolling Hill Park there along is. Mill Creek that is property that we have talked about from time to time. Mm -hmm. So I presume it's not at that location but must be adjacent to that location. Mr. Glichenik? Yes. That project is primarily up at the upper end of the park on Mill Creek above Barker's Mill. Uh, the lower end we had looked at as a potential area for a project both off-site and on-site, but we have rock outcrops along the stream corridor and uh, that disqualifies it for a uh, for credits in a, a restoration project. Um, as you probably recall from the MS4 permit, we, have, we were tasked with reducing uh, certain pollutants within our streams that were identified as being impaired. Those pollutants were primarily sediment and nutrients. And the way the mechanics work, if you can take care of the sediment, usually the nutrients will be taken care of along with that. So we looked at, projects that were available, areas that were available throughout the township's uh, property, uh, its parks, its open space, to see where we could do projects to get credits, if you will, uh, that would be uh, set against the uh, maximum number that we needed for the watersheds that we were in. Primarily have two watersheds. One's in the, the uh, Indian Creek watershed, eventually drains into Cobbs Creek, and the other one is what they consider Mill Creek. It does have some parallel streams that don't actually drain into Mill Creek, but go into the Schuylkill River, but they put it in the hydraulic unit named for Mill Creek. Um, and what our challenge has been is that we need to be able to maximize the credits for the investment that we're putting into the project. Anywhere where we have rock outcrops, those are uh, disqualified because it's uh, it, because of the rock, it's considered hard armoring, and it's already stable. It's against rock. So we've looked at uh, a number of sites. That particular section for Mill Creek 
uh, it has a lot of challenges in it, and we don't get uh, opportunities on both sides of the creek along that whole length. So where you're doing one side versus two sides of a creek, it just ends up being a little bit more expensive. So I hope that answers. We're about halfway through with our projects and uh, with the credit, um, uh, the credit um, total that we need to achieve for this permit cycle. Uh, with the designs that we have here listed on these projects, if we get them all approved at the rate that we think we will for those credits for the, for the improvements we're gonna make, we believe we'll be well within the, the requirement uh, for this cycle of permit. But because of the delay with COVID uh, and funding, some things were pushed back and also some further uh, guidance, if you will, from, from the DEP refinement of their guidance, they've added additional requirements to get the, to get the projects approved. And, um, and so we're working through that and we wanna make sure we can get the permit before we commit to bidding the project. So that's why there's some of these have been pushed to, you know, to later this year and next year. Is it realistic to expect that all eight projects would be completed uh, in 2023? I, I think it's possible, but as Paul said and 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 Ernie said, it's very aggressive. Um, we also we're hoping you know we are going to try to gang projects together so we can get uh, the opportunity for a larger project and possibly get better prices. We've done that on past projects, and uh, it seems to work. Um, and is the, and, uh, so, so at a simple level, is the Mill Creek? along at, at Rolling Hill Park, is it primarily stream bank restoration? Oh, it's only stream bank restoration. And okay. Commissioner Zoloff, uh, Ms. Holler also indicated that there are issues in that area with undermining of the trail, that this would address that undermining of the trail. So, you know, in keeping, you know, our trail moving and open, we're addressing two things at once. Good, okay. Thank you. Commissioners with questions or comments on this category. Okay. Thank you, um, uh, Paul and Ed. So we'll go to our last category of projects, which is sanitary sewer, which is a long list of projects that total 3.7 million. As you've indicated, it's a long list, but every year, this is a long list. This is, yes. you know, it takes a lot to keep our, our sewer system functioning. So uh, you flush and don't know there's an issue. Um, but okay. all jokes aside, you know, it does, it, there, there is a lot, you know, we have 18 pump stations, all have to be maintained. We have pumps within each, it, it, there's a lot involved. And then a lot of this is uh, how we deal with infiltration into our into our sanitary sewer lines, and those numbers are here year and year again. So I'll go through it quickly. Um, so one of the items you'll see here is our Philadelphia contributions, 4708. That's what we pay to the city of Philadelphia for the upgrade of their treatment plant that we send our affluent to. Um, we have a contract we have to pay, so forth. You'll see another generator and Commissioner Kramer will provide numbers in the fall for that. Um, for, uh, next, uh, you know, 4718, that's our sewer lining repair fund. And 4719 is the complement. One does the lines, one does the manholes where they're, they're treated and sealed to help with infiltration, which keeps our costs down to our residents. Uh, because we pay for that water when it hits, you know, it's rainwater, groundwater that gets into the system. We get metered when it goes into the city of Philadelphia, we get charged for it. That charge is reflected in the per gallon price that residents pay. By doing this, we cut down on those costs. We keep that system moving. It, it a lot of time, you know, what it does is it extends the life of that system, those pipes and so forth. Um, if you go to 4739, Again, this is pump station building improvements. These are repairs that we make to our house, for lack of a better 
back a lack of a better term these are the things we need to do at different stations to keep them open keep them functioning you'll see one of them is uh emerge you know is uh the glen road dry well step repairs simple things but that's what makes up that number there um you'll see uh 4744 a large grit removal system replacement so we've been working our way through our through our systems because they're 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 aged. This is what gets the a lot of the byproduct. Um, imagine kitty litter that type of that goes into the wet wells. We can't pump that to the city of Philadelphia. It, it's pulled out. We have to remove it and and address it by DEP standards. Um, 47, 47, little amount, hoist replacements. That's a safety thing that we have to do. Um, 47, 48, sewage pump replacements. This is the upgrades of our pumps. As I noted earlier, we have 18 stations. We're continually upgrading as needed um, or rebuilding as needed. Um, spring mill improvements, uh, that's electrical and ventilation because we're, we're upgrading to meet certain requirements for airflow and so forth. And then one of the items you'll see there is 4752, which is the Fenimore force main. We've been having uh, issues with that force main where we're having cracks at the joints and so forth. So there's a section that we're looking to make repairs and replacement up to the roadway from the pump station. So as, I, as noted, good bit of money to keep the sewer systems working. Um, it's an independent fund. You know, the, the, these dollars are paid for out of that, the, out of the fund. Uh, so it's independent. We, you know, as as our costs increase, the that is passed on to the public in their in their sewer bill. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll note that I, it's forty seven forty eight. The Belmont uh, pump station uh, five hundred and five thousand. That. Ernie has in his memo is a candidate for ARP allocation. Um, Paul, question on uh, 4707 going back to Bridge 6. This says 100,000 for County Bridge 6. Is that because we have a uh, sanitary sewer line that uh, we do. Is, we, is, we, is incorporated in or under that bridge? And so that's so that. that, that does that work that we're going to do at the same time the bridge is being reconstructed or do we have to wait for the bridge to be built and then we come in to do that? What that is is <coughs> under, under bridge six, there was a sanitary sewer line that was in jeopardy uh, when, when the bridge had its issue and the collapsing of the sidewalk and so forth. Um, but w as we are working through design, we, we are responsible for the suspension of that force main as it goes under the new bridge. So what we did was we worked with the design team and we worked with uh, the county and we've incorporated this part of the pro this work into the contract for the bridge replacement. So this will be done by the contractor who does the bridge and we will pay for this to the county. So it'll be included in the specs that the county puts out for bid? It is, it is included. Um, within the specs. Very good. Okay, commissioners with questions or comments on this category. Commissioner Kramer. Uh, thank you um, again. Um, Paul, I guess the um, concerns I have probably are under 4711, um, which is again emergency generator upgrades. Um, I know that we've heard from members of the Environmental Advisory Council about the belief that particularly the Ardmore pumping station would be an excellent candidate for um, solar panels. And I was wondering whether or not any of this information had been shared with you um, and whether you've done an analysis of whether we can do some more sustainable approach to this. I received the information late yesterday afternoon. Okay. I've looked at it preliminarily. As I noted earlier, I will um, work with the design team to see about the feasibility, um, capacity. Other question would be, since this is 
a generator to a DEP regulated pump station that must maintain pumping capabilities at all times if it's even allowed to, to be on anything but a generator. Um, but we will investigate it and we will bring forward uh, associated costs and so forth in the fall. We'll Thank you little, very we'll much. We'll do a little bit of work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kramer. Other commissioners with questions or comments? Okay. We've gotten through the list of uh, the categories for um, capital projects proposed uh, for 2023 and then the five years beyond. Um, uh, before I turn to our township managers, any commissioner have any uh, overall comments? Um, seeing none, uh, I guess the next step is for our township manager to tell us the next steps. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, so, uh, as I uh, relayed a little earlier, we will continue working on this CIP. We will refine our numbers. We will answer the questions that may have been raised here this evening to uh, to get answers to any of those. And uh, we will work to uh, put the CIP into our normal CIP book form and introduce it uh, by uh, early November for your consideration, at which point uh, You'll take over and and decide whether there are any other things to add or subtract. Uh, so we'll refine our numbers over the summer. Um, we've done a lot of work already, and of course, over the next two months, uh, uh, all of us turn our attention to the operating budget so we can be prepared for the uh, September uh, operating budget work session. But we'll continue working on the CIP. I just want to thank all the staff who was here tonight. Uh, in case you had any questions and concerns, uh, we, we appreciate all the effort that's uh, gone into the uh, CIP works to date. Uh, that was, that's about it, Commissioner. Uh, Ernie, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, Donna, and all the management team that was here tonight, and Ernie, for uh, your uh, leadership on, on what's one of the most important things we do, which is um, spend money for capital improvements in this township and plan plan for it properly so that we do it well. Uh, and I think this is an important part of our, our process and our budget cycle. And uh, as Ernie said, in a little over two months, we'll be doing this again in a workshop format and it will be for the operating budget. We'll do that in early September. And so this is a, an important step uh, as we as we uh, move towards the 2023 budget. So um, I'm glad that Vice President Gavern is uh, with us uh, remotely tonight so he can be aware that it's 8.08 and we are done. So um, we, we, we beat our goal of 9 a.m. No, Commissioner oh, Kramer, yes. uh, excuse yeah. me, nine, we, we beat 9 a.m. and we beat 9 p.m. And Commissioner Kramer was, uh, you know, making it very clear that we should be able to do so and well in advance of nine o'clock and we have done so. So thank you all for your participation and uh, uh, I don't think we convene until after the 4th of July. So happy Independence Day to everyone. And thanks for those who were here who couldn't comment. That concludes the business tonight.